Want to find out just how different the original tale of Snow White was? Well, I've read the original Grimm Brothers tale of Snow White, and it is terrifying. Let's see just how much Disney transformed Snow White. Well, hello there. My name's Jeremy, and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, to the TV shows and everything in between. That's why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now on to today's topic, Transformed by Disney, the terrifying original tale of Snow White. Disney's Snow White is based on the original Grimm Brothers tale from the 1800s. The Grimm Brothers originally set out to put down in writing many of the German folk tales which were told orally throughout their country as they did not want them to be lost. But it's a little more complicated than that as the Grimm Brothers released seven different editions of their tales. Once their book proved to be popular, they made revision after revision, refining the stories and getting more artistic. They made widespread revisions and even took out and added entire stories. Snow White was one of the original tales from the 1812 first edition and was still present in the 1857 seventh edition. I've read both and I'll make my main comparisons to the original first edition, but I will also let you know about some of the differences between the first and seventh Grimm Brothers editions. And make sure to stick around to the end as the changes made to how Snow White is woken from the curse and what happens to the evil queen are really crazy. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. Once upon a time in the middle of winter, when snowflakes were falling like feathers from the sky, a beautiful queen was sitting and sewing at a window with a black ebony frame. And as she was sewing and looking out the window at the snow, she pricked her finger with the needle and three drops of blood fell on the snow. The red looked so beautiful on the white snow that she thought to herself, if only I had a child as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as the wood of the window frame. Soon thereafter, she gave birth to a little daughter who was white as snow, as red as blood, and her hair as black as ebony. That's why the child was called Little Snow White. That's the opening of the original tale, an opening which doesn't even exist in Disney's movie. Instead, Disney starts with the pages from a fairy tale book, gives a bit of background, but nothing from this opening really remains. The mirror is the only one to even make a reference to the white, red, and black of Snow White. But that's a small change compared to the next one, because who is the evil queen? Snow White's stepmother, right? No, that is wrong. It's her actual biological mother. The same one we just saw hoping for a child. Yikes. To do what she does to her own child. But this wasn't truly a change Disney made. It was actually a change the Grimm brothers made. In the first edition, there just weren't any evil stepmothers. They were actually the biological mothers. But among the changes that Grimm's made were to make this a little bit more palatable to audiences by changing them to being wicked stepmothers. After all, it's all fun and games and just fine, as long as it's not the biological mother. Now, Snow White very quickly surpasses her mother's beauty at the age of seven. It's clearly identified in the book. Disney is a bit harder. The generally accepted answer is that Disney's Snow White is 14 years old, which comes from a movie outline for Snow White that can be found in the Art of Disney book. Those, by the way, are giantly different ages. Think about everything that happens to Snow White in Disney's movie. Now make it worse as the grim tale is darker. And now, imagine that poor Snow White is only seven and having to survive all of that. Whoa! There is no way she is not horribly scarred and completely screwed up for life. I'm barely into this book, and these two changes are horrid. Remember how we meet Snow White cleaning while in rags? Didn't happen in the book. 
No wishing song either. Well, no songs, really. It's not a musical, after all. And with no song means no introduction of Prince Charming. He won't see Snow White until after she's in a glass coffin. And no Snow White hoping for her prince to come someday. Snow White is still taken out into the woods to be killed by the huntsman. But in this case, she doesn't just scream and freeze in place. She begs for her life and offers to run away into the woods. The huntsman accepts this, figuring she'll die anyway. And at least he doesn't have to be the one to kill her. Not quite the compassionate, conflicted guy we get in the movie. Nor is Snow White the weak, helpless heroine. Ooh, and here's a really good nasty one. The evil queen doesn't just get Snow White's heart in a box as proof of her death. No, no, no. Much worse. The huntsman brings her Snow White's lungs and liver. Well, actually a pig's, but the queen doesn't know any better. What does Snow White's mother do with them? She salts them and eats them. She eats her own daughter's lungs and liver. With salt, can't forget that. After all, you gotta hand it to them Grimm brothers. I mean, it would be barbaric to go all cannibal on your seven-year-old daughter. Without salt, that is. I find it such a mystery why Disney didn't do this in theirs. Hmm. But Disney didn't always make things happier. The whole scary scene in the woods where everything warps and looks terrifying. Logs that are crocodile and vines that are snakes. All of that was added by Disney. It doesn't exist in the Grim Tale. But Disney does balance it out by adding in the woodland creatures, because those also don't exist in the original Grim Tale. A very fitting thing for Disney to add when you think about it. Their earlier shorts often had cute animals. Good transformations by Disney here. The dwarves are massively changed by Disney. Disney made the dwarves messy slobs. The Grim Tale has the dwarves as quite neat. They left meals out from when they got home from the mines. Oh, and it's a gold mine they work in. Or a copper and gold mine if you look at the 7th edition. Not the amazing, beautiful diamond and gem mine from Disney's movie. That part always got me, by the way. The dwarves sing about how they work all day and it's hard to get rich quick. But look at their mine. There are glittering gems everywhere. I always figured they just didn't understand the value of the gems. They probably take the gems to some middleman who's like, Hmm, a mine cart full of diamonds. Well, that's not great. But I suppose I can give you a week's worth of food for that. Maybe the dwarves didn't feel victorious when they get him to raise his offer to two whole weeks worth of food. And they think to themselves, What good businessmen are we? Meanwhile, the middleman over there is a multimillionaire merchant. Anywho, back to the dwarves. Can you name all seven? I can. Easily. Wait for it. Silence. The Grimm brothers didn't name the dwarves. They were all pretty much the same. Disney transformation to the rescue. Doc, happy, sneezy, dopey, grumpy, bashful, and sleepy. And the dwarves get a good portion of Disney's movie. Actually, the movie was even more dwarf-focused early on in the production, as that had been why Walt Disney originally wanted to do Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The dwarves are the comedy relief in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and you can certainly see the similarity between the dwarf pieces in Snow White and a bunch of Disney's original animated shorts, which share a similar style of humor. Here's a few other quick differences while we're at the cottage. Snow White goes ahead and tries a bit of bread, vegetables, and wine from each of the seven plates, and then goes to the back of the room, tries out each bed, and then goes to sleep. But yes, by the way, you'll note there's only one big room in the cottage with the beds in the back of it. Oh, and she's only seven, by the way, remember. So she fits on a single bed rather than needing three of them. The dwarves then come in and do their best three bears impression from Goldilocks. Who's been sitting in my chair? Who's eaten off my plate? Who's eaten some of my bread? Who's eaten some of my vegetables? Who's been using my little fork? Who's been cutting with my little knife? Who's had something to drink from my little cup? They repeat this same routine with the beds. But they don't wake Snow White because she's too beautiful. Unlike Disney's dwarves who accidentally wake Snow White up. And in the morning, they let Snow White stay if she does a bunch of chores 
and they tell her that she'll want for nothing. Here's another interesting little change. In the movie, Snow White says the queen will never find her at the dwarf's cottage, and the dwarfs agree. In the book, the dwarfs knew that the queen would end up finding Snow White eventually. You'd think that if they knew that, they would have left someone at home to protect a seven-year-old girl. But no. And here's where it gets even worse. In the movie, the queen only comes to the cottage once to kill Snow White. In the book, the queen tries three times. And she thinks she's successful every time. The dwarfs come home each time and think Snow White is dead. And those dwarfs never did anything to protect little seven-year-old Snow White other than tell her eh, to not talk to strangers and eh, don't let them open, you know, the door. She's seven. And your advice failed again and again. Maybe that was what the dwarfs meant when they said she'd want for nothing. I mean, after all, you don't really want anything if you're dead. Let's talk a little more about those three attempts by the queen. First off, the queen simply used different disguises in the book. Disney made it way cooler by having her use magic to turn into a hag. Definitely a win for Disney right there. Also, going from three attempts down to one makes the evil queen a lot scarier. Once you've seen the queen fail twice and Snow White come back to life twice, it's not all that scary when we come back to the third time. So what did the evil queen try in the book? Well, first, she brought lace, which Snow White bought, and the queen tied too tight around her. So then Snow White dropped to the ground, seemingly dead. That is, until the dwarfs came home later and, well, they simply loosened the lace. That, that was it. And look, she's back to life again. So the queen then comes back the next day with a poison comb. But the dwarves again come home after work, find Snow White looking dead. Uh, they find the comb in her hair, remove it, and look! Snow White's back to life again! That's how poison works, by the way. Just an FYI, you just take the poison thing out of the hair, you're good to go. Now, we finally get to the famous apple. But the queen has to be a little smarter this time because Snow White has already been tricked twice. So she makes a half red, half white apple. And because she's so good at making potions, she made it so only the red side is poisoned. So when she is trying to sell it to Snow White, she cuts it in half and eats the white side to show that the apple is safe to eat. And Snow White... Little seven-year-old survived three murder attempts and left alone at home by the dwarves by herself. That little Snow White opens the door, buys the apple, and bites it. And again, falls down dead. But for real this time. Kind of. And the queen returns home to her castle. No falling off a cliff after being chased by the dwarves. The dwarves, after coming home, finding Snow White dead again, they check for a lace or a comb. No luck, though. This time, it seems she's really dead. So they cry and they mourn for three days. In the movie, it seemed pretty much like one night, which I think fits the pacing of the movie better. Although the emotional impact of the dwarves crying and mourning for three days certainly has a better emotional impact. Okay, you've all waited this long, and I promised you in the beginning that two of the biggest changes and weirdest, craziest parts were at the end. Here they are. So the first one, the glass coffin is the same in both the movie and the book, but in the original Grim Tale, the prince hasn't already met Snow White. He eventually comes around and spends a night in the dwarf's cottage where the glass coffin is. It's not actually outside like in the movie, but actually in the dwarf's cottage. Now, while he's there, he sees Snow White, notices that she's a princess because it's written on the coffin, and he falls in love with her because she is so beautiful. Here's what happens next. He's like, Hey, dwarfs, can I buy that coffin? I'm rich and have lots of money. They're like, Not for sale, bud. Take a hike. So then he's like, Please, 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 I can't live without her. And the dwarves are all like, Oh, well, in that case, here, have her in her glass coffin as a gift. The prince then has his servants take her back with him to his father's castle. And what does he do? Well, apparently, if you're rich and have servants, you make them carry the dead seven-year-old girl you're in love with from room to room in her glass coffin. 
Because you're so obsessed, you apparently can't even eat if you can't see her. Right. Well, luckily for everyone, there's a moment where the prince leaves the room and the servants are so pissed off at carrying Snow White around all the time that one of them grumbles a bit, then lifts Snow White out of the glass coffin, hits her on the back, and out pops the apple. Snow White's alive again! Because why? Because, um, that's... that's, uh, death and poison. That's not how death works! <laughs> this is so long and convoluted and more than a little creepy in the Grim Tale. For what it's worth, the Grim Brothers even thought that a little bit? and changed it by the 7th edition so that they just made a servant stumble while carrying Snow White to the castle. Which apparently is enough to knock the apple out of her throat, and guess what, she's alive! Yay! Still creepy. And I'm still glad that Disney changed this. True Love's Kiss for a dead girl in a coffin? Much better than the book. But what about that evil queen, you ask? You can't just let her get away with this! I agree. Let's find some really, really nasty way to kill her. After all, she did just try four times to kill her seven-year-old daughter. How should we do it, though? Let's do it at little seven-year-old Snow White's wedding. Weddings have lots of dancing, right? Let's invite the queen and have her dance to death. That's fun. So in the book, the mirror let the queen know that Snow White was still alive, but the queen also got this invitation, and of course she's too vain not to come to the wedding. I mean, she needs people to see how beautiful she is. The book has no happily ever after at the end of it. Instead, the last lines of the grim tale were this. Speaking of the queen, When she arrived, she saw that little Snow White was the bride. Iron slippers were then heated over a fire. The queen had to put them on and dance in them and her feet were miserably burned. But she had to keep dancing in them until she danced herself to death. That's how the tale ends. That line right there. And by the way, just as a note, dancing to death, quote unquote, in iron slippers that are red hot is a nasty, nasty, horrible way to die. And I thought falling off a cliff and having vultures come down and eat you was bad. This is way worse. So, I think you can agree with me that, yikes, it's terrifying. So the biggest things that are transformed from the grim tale and no longer in Disney's movie? One, Snow White being seven. Just seven years old. The evil queen is no longer her stepmother, she's her mother. No personalities for the dwarves, they're all just carbon copies of each other. The queen personally trying to kill her daughter three times, and sending the huntsman to kill her once too, for good measure. The whole creepy prince buying the seven-year-old girl's coffin thing. And that the book has no happily ever after. Instead, it ends with the queen being killed by dancing in red-hot iron slippers. <laughs> Those Grimm brothers, they certainly like their terrifying tale. I've gotta say... When it comes down to it, I prefer my happier, prettier, song-filled Disney movie. Walt Disney debated a bunch of different names for the dwarves before settling on the famous seven. What dwarf names do you wish had been chosen? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know if there's another Disney movie you'd like to see me compare to the original tale. As always, I'll try to respond to everyone's comments as best I can. I really love seeing them. Thanks for watching! Snow White Week will be continuing tomorrow with what if Snow White were a strong female character. So if that all sounds great to you, definitely, definitely go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring the bell. And until next time, have a magical day and may the force be with you always.